a private notice question on COVID-19 track and trace information. Lord Hunt of King's Heath. My Lords, I beg leave to ask the question standing my name on the order paper. My Lords, the Health Protection Coronavirus Restrictions Self-Isolation England Regulations 2020 authorised the police, local authorities and NHS Test and Trace to share information where necessary for the purposes of enforcement. The Department for Health and Social Care and the National Police Chief Council have agreed a memorandum of understanding so that the police, when given a report that someone is failing to, to self-isolate, can check with NHS Test and Trace whether the person in question has been formally notified to self-isolate. For the noble lord, the minister, but does he agree that the sharing of health, in what essentially is health information, with the police is a highly sensitive matter? Uh, and my lords, it should not have been sneaked out on a Friday night without any parliamentary reference whatsoever. My lords, was the advice taken of NHS experts? on the impact this might have on people prepared to take the test. Is he aware of the uh, advice that's been given by the BMA and other health service organisations that, particularly in relation to harder-to-reach communities, this may dampen down the numbers of people coming forward for tests? My Lords, was that taken into account? My Lords, uh, can I reassure uh, the noble Lord that no health information <coughs> is shared? This is uh, isolation information, not health information. Uh, I can tell that the Noble Lord isn't happy with that. Can I reassure him that people are asked to isolate for a number of reasons? It might be because they tested positive, or it might be because they were close to someone who has tested positive. So the fact that they've been asked to isolate has got nothing to do with the state of their health. Uh, my Lords, we, uh, we are discussing this regulation on Thursday. That will give us uh, an opportunity to go into it further, an opportunity that I look forward to very much indeed. And in terms of the impact of, of, uh, of taking the test, we have looked at uh, public attitudes to the principle of isolation and to the enforcement of isolation. It enjoys an enormous amount of public support, and I think he underestimates those in the BAME community uh, and their response to this responsible approach to isolation. Morris of Aberavon. I welcome the principles set out in the Memorandum of Understanding on Prosecutions and the Regulations 12, 13 and 14. And particularly, there will be regular reviews, both locally and nationally, so that lessons can be learned. Will the reviews be published? And will the Minister confirm that there is a 12-month limit on prosecutions if evidence is available? Uh, those are two very uh, important and clear questions. I will, though, have to uh, take them back to the Department and write to the Noble Lord with very clear answers. Scriven. My Lord, despite what the Noble Lord, the Minister, says, this memorandum of understanding has undermined some people's trust in test and trace. And the best way to deal with that is to shed the light of transparency onto what actually is in the memorandum of understanding. So, therefore, will the government commit to publish the memorandum of understanding? Yeah, yeah. Well, my lords, I do uh, commit to publishing the memorandum of understanding. That is our intention. Uh, it has to be cleared of some officials' names uh, and to be uh, redacted accordingly. Uh, and when we've gone through that process, we will be publishing it. But can I just address his central point, which is a very reasonable point, and I'm glad he made it because he is entirely right, and the noble Lord, uh, Lord Hunt is right, that there is a balance here. Uh, the balance is between uh, the principle of consent, which is how we went about the uh, implementation of, of a great many of our measures, uh, and uh, the principle of effectiveness. And we are quite late now in the stage of the epidemic. I think it is reasonable to, to demonstrate the seriousness of the principle of isolation, to make the clarification of what isolation means crystal clear and therefore in statute. And for some people who, take their who do not have a responsible attitude and in fact have behaved irresponsibly, for them to have the sanction of the law. It is not our intention to rack up a large number of prosecutions on this, as it hasn't been in other areas. It is, though, our in intention to be clear to be determined and to make this incredibly important part of our uh, breaking of the chain of transformation as effective as possible. Dennis Lane Fox of Soho. 
Understandably, this news has caused much confusion. You only need to take to social media to see people's anxieties. As I understand it, the app keeps all data locally on your phone, and only when you upload a positive test does it then become more widely but anonymized and available. What measures are the government going to take to make sure that communications about this is crystal clear so that people are able to totally understand the privacy implications of what they're doing, as it seems that there is still much anxiety about exactly what is able to be done? Uh, well, I'm grateful for uh, Noble Baroness for, for her insight, but can I reassure her that the information on the app is not covered by this memorandum of understanding. That is a principle that has been made very clear uh, by the NHS app. This is the um, uh, data that is held on CTAS, the Public Health uh, England um, database. It is, um, remains the property of uh, Public Health England, and the MOU is very specific about that. The app, as uh, the Noble Baroness is, uh, is aware, is a distributed so source of information. It has extremely high uh, privacy barriers to it, and this MOU uh, does not in any way breach those privacy barriers. Well, speaker, I, think, I think it's disingenuous for the Noble Lord and Minister to say that this is not a health issue in answer to my Noble uh, friend Lord Hunt. And following up from Baroness Lane Fox's question, um, I imagine the police would have been concerned about the implications for data protection from both themselves and for individuals. So, can I ask the Noble Lord, the Minister, about how the storage of personal data that's being handed over to the police is going to happen? Who will keep that and how will it be handled? And are there any discussions taking place or planned involving the Department of Health and the Home Office or Cabinet Office on data sharing? Well, my Lords, the, um, the data collected by PHE for Test and Trace Service is held, as I said, by the Contact Tracing and Advice Service, CTAS database, and it will be provided to the police on request. Uh, it isn't a, a question of uh, a wholesale sharing of, of all data. Uh, the data uh, uh, that can be shared with the police are the recorded name and contact details of an individual who has been instructed to self-isolate and the date on which they were told to self-isolate and the date on which the period of self-isolation ends. No testing data or health data are shared with the police at all. Lord Mayor, we have a defined national police strategy on the policing of breaches of self-isolation, or will we see a patchwork of implementations by different chief constables across the country? Um, I thank the Noble Lord for his, uh, for his um, uh, question. The intention of these regulations are threefold. Firstly, to increase public understanding of the importance of self-isolation. Secondly, is to help support people to comply with self-isolation by making sure that they understand the consequences uh, of, of um, uh, breaking those rules. Uh, and thirdly, is to introduce fixed penalty notices for those who do not follow the rules. It is not our intention to uh, enforce uh, a, um, uh, a surveillance culture around this. It is instead to leave it to members of the public to take it into their own hands as whether they would like to uh, share instances of breaches uh, with the police and to give the police an opportunity to follow up uh, those reports in a timely, uh, accurate and efficient fashion. Uh, Baroness Jones of Malscombe. My Lords, uh, in an earlier answer to the Noble Lord, Lord Hunt, the Minister seemed to suggest that Lord Hunt was casting aspersions against the BM, BAME community in terms of their willingness to sign up or not because of data sharing with the police. Would he like to take back that slur? And could he tell me, please, which BAME communities he's spoken to before imposing these conditions? I'm grateful for, for, for that um, uh, important question. And I at no point would ever wish to cast any aspersions or slur to uh, the noble Lord, Lord Hunt, who I count as a close colleague and someone whose opinion I respect enormously. But uh, I was replying uh, in response to his question about BAME communities. We are deeply, deeply involved in talking to a large number of those communities who have been traditionally hard to reach. We are engaged with them at, in many, many levels to talk to them about how, they can, um, how we can 
uh, address the marketing challenge of getting our messages to them, how we can shape our messages so that they are uh, fully understood, and how we can address any concerns they may have about the test and trace um, programme. I would like to report to the noble Baroness that we have been extremely pleased by the very encouraging responses we've had from those communities, and that is why I think it's not reasonable to assume that any one particular community would be more or less suspicious of this programme than another.